Hey everyone, Selena here on this week's episode of Selena Thomas, SCV's HR Guru, where I bring the stories of our community businesses and the people behind them to you. I'm so happy to talk to this next guest. He is the owner of Ice Recovery right here in Santa Clarita. He's a business owner that had a passion for the people in this community, their recovery, and of course, giving back. It's always so important to feature these types of businesses because they're not just in it to make a profit, they're in it to make a difference. And I really enjoyed that about this business owner. His name is Troy and he is going to share his story and of course what he's looking forward to in terms of this community recovering from COVID and how he's giving back. I think you'll enjoy it. If you have a story, product, or person that you'd like to have featured on the show, give me a call. You can reach out to me on the signal, Selena Thomas, SCV's HR Guru, and I'd be happy to feature them. In the meantime, enjoy this episode and stay safe. Hey everyone, I am here with Troy Uden, the owner of Ice Recovery right here in Santa Clarita. Thanks for joining me, Troy. How are you doing today? Hey, my pleasure, Selena. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I want to kind of set the stage about how I came to know who you are and allow you to then share a little bit about how you started your business. But, you know, I have student athletes. I have two student athletes. People don't have to spend much time. They realize that I'm that mom. And so I just came back from nationals about a week ago and I had my volleyball daughter that was like, listen, mom, my legs are killing me. I've heard about this ice recovery. You have to take me. And of course that mom is going to take her to get recovery. And I walked into your place and I was so impressed, not just the fact that you are a hands-on business owner, but you were genuinely concerned about her recovery and engaged and, and, and took the time. So I want to thank you for that. First of all, oh, my, my pleasure. It was great <laughs> you. I, was, I was bummed because we got a little bit busier than I expected because I wanted to sit down and chat with you. Uh, well, so here's our time now. Do it today. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so that being said, um, I know this is the new technology, but I want to hear a little bit about the backstory and about how you started, what's ICE all about, and of course, your mission is to serve. And I always enjoy seeing that in real life. I could see that translated with all the athletes that spoke to how you help them accomplish their goals. That must be so rewarding. Oh, it's it's been a dream come true. I never imagined it would come into what it is today. The culture that we have there, the people that come in, it's a giant family. Like there is a lot of trash talking that goes on daily. And for me, it's like I don't want to miss a day because I have like a little bit of FOMO. There's going right. to be something that happens and people are going to text me and talk trash. And so I just want to be there every day. And luckily, that's the environment that we have. We have so many great people that come in. It was such a great culture and energy that you're talking about. And it's almost something that you have to see in person to really capture. But what I saw in terms of the messages from athletes from all sports, all ages, um, the demographics is really a picture of our community. And yeah. I want you to speak to that because they took the time to share that with you because people start in Santa Clarita, but they go and do big things. They're part of that. Yeah. I mean, you saw the athlete wall. We have people in Texas. We have people pitching all over the country. We have athletes. We have professional athletes that have sent back the jersey. Uh, all the jerseys on the wall are local Santa Clarita kids. Um, wow. So it's been super cool. But the part that I enjoy the most is when I was thinking of this concept, I thought it was going to be all... 16 to 18 year old athletes like your daughter mm -hmm. um it was just going to be like a high school locker room mm -hmm. and that's where we got the idea of the jerseys and stuff like that and when you walk in you have anywhere from 12 years old to 79 years old yes uh, that's what i such, saw <laughs> such a wide variety of people and that really wasn't the plan and it kind of took off and luckily with sports being canceled for the last 12 months uh the that was very helpful like those people still had the same aches and pains they yes. were still trying to work out still trying to get better yes um, so it was it benefited us a lot to have that age population and yes the, the majority of our clients surprisingly are like 45 to 55 that are still mm -hmm. active 
But when a lot of the high school kids, they hear about ice recovery, like they see the swag around school, yes. the bands, like it's turned into like such a culture thing where it is. I remember the first year we opened, when you sign up, you get the the stuff that your daughter got, the t-shirt, the towel, the, the swag. Yes. Yeah, all the swag that the kids love. And, and like, we just give it to them. That was kind of a thing. And I remember a couple of kids like came in and they were like, hey, can I buy a shirt? And I'm like, no, the, the shirts aren't for sale. And <laughs> this is like, members only. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is members only. Like this is right. our environment, this is our group. And so it's kind of- I cool love that. that kind of happened where all the kids are like, oh no, I go to ice. And so I got this shirt, so you can't yes. have it. And it turned into, a, like, I remember a kid signing up and he was like, hey, I saw my friend had a red yes. dance. Like, <laughs> can I get one of those? And I'm like, oh yeah, I, I didn't know you didn't get one. Yes. Uh, so it's and been super cool. Branding. I love that branding and that um, it is really bragging rights that I'm a part of ICE. And, yeah. um, you know, I have two athletes and, you know, my, my 16 year old came home, 15 year old came home with her, her swag. And now the 17 year old's ready. And, you know, behind that though, is the true recovery of these athletes. And yeah. that's so important for people and the kind of the common denominator that I saw on your wall was that you help them reach their goals. And I'd love to talk about that because it really is something that is part of them reaching it is being able to, as an athlete rehab and recover to get back out on the field. But you're also talking about people that want to stay in the game. Someone in my age range yeah. that's like, look, I want to be athletic. But I, 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 I'm not a spring chicken anymore. So I, have, I need the <laughs> machine. So I good. need every possible machine you have <laughs> to help me. So let's talk about that. I mean, that culture of it being able to use this technology and create a place for people to go that have that in common. I love that. Yeah, I think one of the great things is we have a lot of great athletes that come in. What I'm most proud of, though, is the people that they are. Um, yes. One of the pictures on the wall is two of like the top 10 national players in the country in their sport, Allison Jacobs and yes. Shay O'Leary, sitting yes. there at the very beginning. And both of them are doing homework in the Normatex. And yes. like that just shows it's a student athlete at its heart. And your priority is your being a student, getting yes. good grades. And those are the kind of kids that I want. And so if a kid's not doing well in school, like I'm going to harp on them. I'm going to sure. talk and the parents count on me. Like, I can't tell you how many that. parents have sent me a message before the kid comes in and will be like, hey, can you talk to him or her about this? They don't listen to me, but they'll listen to you. I and love that, Troy. I always, I always laugh because they're like, man, my kid. I'm like, don't worry. I was the same way. I remember my father would tell me something as a kid. I'm like, dad. You don't know shit. In one ear and out the other. Right? I'm like, you don't know anything. And then all of a sudden, my coach or uh, someone who I really liked would tell me something. And I'm like, dad, wait till you hear what this person said. My dad's like, wait, I just Didn't told I just you that, say that? Ago. <laughs> Like, how come it sounds so much smarter coming out of someone else's mouth? Right. And that, that's just as a kid. That's who you are. Your parents don't know anything. They're so out of the loop. And as you get older, I tell my dad, I'm like, man. You're not as dumb as I thought you were. <laughs> he became the wisest man in the world. I yeah, it's crazy. The worst it part, is. though, is I'm saying all this stuff that he said, and I'm like, Oh I'm, no, I'm I not really that old. I'm becoming like, my I, father. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that it's so important and impressive that you use your influence for good and not evil, because a lot of things can be done with influence, and when we find out that we have that. And one, you didn't take it for granted, but you're a very good steward of it. And I so appreciate that because as a parent, now sending my daughters in there, you know, you, you mentioned to me, hey, mom, you can come the first time, but after that, they can come on their own. And I like that it becomes a part of their athletic routine and that, that becomes a safe place for them and it comes a place for them to be able to take those things. And so you being on the other end of that, it means so much. So I, I want to just give you some props for that. And I want to definitely talk a little bit about the technology. What is the technology? What is this big container that Morgan got into and what does it do to your body? It's crazy. So I'm sure you grew up the same way playing sports. You would sit in the ice bath. Yes. And you're in that cold bucket. You're not getting it clean. Like technically you're supposed to be cleaned out after each treatment, dump all the water, put new ice in, but you can't yes. do that. 
Uh, so you have all these kids going in one after the other. So a lot of right. times in colleges, you'll see staph infection. Uh, sure. You'll see a lot of issues related to that because you can't take care of it the way you need to. But I went away to school. I uh, went to UC Davis and you're sitting in that ice bath three times a week. Easy. Like you're cold and miserable. You get out, you're cold for another hour. And you're like, yeah. I hate my life. Mm -hmm. And ironically, so I still try to stay somewhat in shape. And uh, so when I was in law school, I would still every Monday, I would do an ice bath. I'd stop home at Costco on the way back and go home, put 80 pounds of ice in the tub, fill it up with cold water and be miserable every oh, Monday. Wow. And I don't know, like six weeks left of law school. I ended up seeing a cryotherapy ad and decided to go try it in Scottsdale. So I went to school, went to cryo after. I did it one time and I was like, huh. Like huh. I woke up the next day, I'm like, this is cool. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. Am I supposed to feel great? Would I have felt great even if I didn't do it? Like, I didn't know. So I went to class on Wednesday mm -hmm. and the class was like halfway between uh, Scottsdale. I drove 20 minutes, class got canceled. So I was like, shoot, I'm gonna try driving a little bit further, do cryotherapy again. And did it another time. I was like, oh, woke up Thursday. I'm like, this feels pretty good. Yes. I went again on Friday. And normally getting out of bed Saturday morning, just from sitting at a desk all day, the aches and the pains of the week. Yes. And I get out of bed and I'm slow. And my body's cracking. Sure. <laughs> and I remember rolling out of bed, getting up to go to the bathroom. I'm like, whoa. I feel like, good. Nothing hurts. Yeah. And I, wow. fell in, I fell in love with it. And I sat there and I was in, uh, in class on Monday and their business card was in my pocket said it helped with arthritis and fibromyalgia, which my younger wow. sister suffers from. And okay. that was, so I actually took it. My business card is exactly the same as the back of theirs because I loved how it said everything that it helped with. And right. by the end of the day, I contacted the company in Texas and set, flew out there to purchase the machines. Wow, what an amazing story. And, <laughs> you know, when I was there, I did see your law degree and obviously... I'm not in a law office, I'm at ICE <laughs> Recovery, but I thought it was so great that you highlighted that because our student athletes are working towards a goal, working towards their education, higher education, and you can take that shortcut. Even if you're not a practicing attorney, uh, you still have a passion for people and you're taking what you've learned from that and your education and you turned it into a great business. Yeah, thank you. I think all these kids, they all have hopes and dreams of being professional athletes. I know I did at the same age. Sure. Uh, but my main priority is get your grades right, get to college, get college paid for so you have no student debt, and then figure out what you want to do. Chase right. the dream as long as it's a passion and as long sure. as you're able. But I mean, for very few people, less than 1% of the world, it works out where they're able to play at that highest level. And that's a true statistic. Given that, it was so important that you, you know, in terms of the optics, it wasn't just the athlete wall. And I grew up in a home of educators. My father, Dr. Thomas, was my principal and later superintendent. And the first thing he put on the wall that uh, of a home that we purchased was his degree. He said, this degree built this house and it's the mm -hmm. foundation of me being able to position you. And I don't take that lightly. And I certainly have done the same myself. But to see someone that has influence and can just talk about the the major athletes that come through there, the fact that you have that highlighted was so impressive. And I'm so glad that the kids kind of get immersed in the, the competition part, but yeah. the foundation of how you built your business is right by the cash register. <laughs> <laughs> so I I'm going to talk a little bit that. about, yeah, it's a great story. And I just couldn't wait to make sure that people know about that. I want to talk about, uh, the other wall that I saw, it looked like your give back wall. It looked like you serve this community in a way that is paying it forward. And so all the way around, it provides people really quickly um, an insight to your values and your principles. So tell me about that wall that's behind you where you're giving back to the community. Yeah, I mean, this wall right now, that's just filled with shoes. I'm not at work right now. But, but at work. Yeah, but at work, long. we have uh, just a couple of highlights. I know up there is a Special Olympics wall um, mm -hmm. where we were the highest fundraising team both years that we were involved. 
uh, which was super cool. It speaks a lot about our members, right? Like yes. that they were able to donate their money to, for a great cause. And we were able to do that. We had a lot of uh, student athletes that participated. Um, at different stages of your life, you could either donate your money or your time. And mm. so for a lot of the adults, they're not able to donate their time anymore. They have families, they have work, they have other things. Priorities. So they donated their money. And a lot of the younger kids, uh, they do the shoot-a-thon. So we went and shot free throws for a couple hours. Um, so that was just a great event to be a part of every year. Sure. Before I went to law school, I was actually a Special Olympics coach for seven years. Wow. Um, so that was always a uh, important cause for me. And I wanted to be a part of it. And once we opened ice, they, Coach Norton asked if I would come back. And it just, I wasn't able to be a new small business owner. I didn't sure. have the time with my family as well. And yes. I was like, hey, how about I'll stay involved somehow. So that's been yeah. my way to give back. Uh, we did the domestic violence fundraiser. Um, we did until recently, we weren't able with COVID, but we used to mm -hmm. donate food to the homeless shelter. Sure. And that was a great way for the young athletes. Just, I mean, you grow up in Valencia yeah. and a lot of kids have. They're blessed. Yeah, right. they're very blessed. And so that was our way of kind of opening up their eyes and they would help yes. serve food. They would sit down and talk with them and just see people where maybe their life took a turn and they sure. obviously aren't as fortunate as uh, we all are. So we would bring food on the first Thursday of every month. Sure. Um, We've done a couple of different things, but yeah, everything is about giving back and we're obviously yes. very blessed. So we want to bless others. All around this guy. I love that. I know I heard you talking a little bit about an upcoming wedding and that you, you <laughs> to buy your tux. <laughs> oh. oh God. So you're going to keep that tux. Tell me that yeah. story. I thought it was so funny that you're going to make good use of that jacket. Oh yeah. We're having formal night the first first of every month. So <laughs> my fiance Molly and I, she had this idea of what she wanted to wear of like this white tux, black lapel, and it's gonna look great with a black bow tie. And sure. we asked them if they had one, and she was like, the guy was like, oh, we don't have one, but we could order it online. And we're like, perfect. And he's like, what color do you want the lapel? And we're like, black. And he's like, okay. And then he's like, what color do you want the inside of the jacket? And I'm like, that's a, a weird question. Yeah, he's bringing out this different cloth. And I'm like, all right. Like, this is fancy. Yeah, let's do it. This is a rental, but I guess they're going to switch it out for us. Real cool. And then right. all of a sudden, he's like, hey, so what color do you want? What do you want inside? What do you want it to be branded, like labeled? Uh, and I'm like, oh, no. And I looked wow. down at the price, and it was like five fifty. And I'm like, uh this isn't a rental anymore. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's a rental. It's a rental. And I'm like, look at that price. And she's like, no, it's good. We're okay. And she goes, it's a rental, right? And the guy's like, oh no, this is a custom jacket. <laughs> at that point, like we spent so much time. You're there, all in. All ready for 30 minutes. And she was set on it. So she just looked at me. She's like, I'm sorry. I'll work really hard. <laughs> and I'm That's like, a great story. Awesome. I'm like, so every day I'm just, some people come downstairs in a bathrobe. I'm going to come out in my wedding jacket every morning. So I get used to it. Definitely. I thought that was such a great story and I, I wish you all the best. It, it's amazing how you took something that you uh, obviously connected to, it resonated with you and how you blended it all with your values your vision for uh, being a part of this community as a business owner, but also an influencer. That's exactly what you are ultimately. Yeah. And I love to make sure that people know that about our community businesses. And I'm excited to share your story. I want to thank you for your time today, Troy, oh. and for all that you do. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Selena. Looking forward Definitely. to seeing you soon. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Hey everybody, it's Lynn here. Now I am had the opportunity to be actually at Ice Recovery and I am going to take a quick tour and talk to a member about what it's like to be a member here, what this facility means to her and her family, and of course her comments about the owner and how it's been a difference for her. Hi Lori, I am here at Recovery and it's so nice to kind of step in and see the facility in person, but today I ran into a member and can you give me your name and information about 
ice recovery, what it's meant for you, and how long have you been here? So my name is Lori, and I've been here about three years now. Um, ice instantly hit family. I got a great referral from Christine Price, and she brought me in, and we did the cryo, and then he opened the saunas, and that's probably been my um, favorite since then. Um, I have to say, when you come to ICE, it's family. You don't just walk in a business. You're not just another number. They don't. They know you by name. They're personal. They know things about you. They take the chance to get to know you. What's hurting? How to help you? The whole bit to it. Um, nice. For COVID, for me, um, ICE was probably the best because my college daughter had to come home. And in the process, she spent nine weeks. She wouldn't leave her house. She, like, mm. thoroughly panicked over it. This was the one place she would actually reach out and go. She would leave the house, come in here, she'd do the sauna, and she, it, it started to give her an opening out. And um, Troy was great financially. It was like tough because it was COVID, and he worked it out because it was the one thing she would reach out and, and get out of the house. So it probably story. helped her for her sanity yeah. and health. And, and mental COVID. health during COVID was a huge issue. and having that safe place, that place that we could kind of just feel connected was so important. It was way important to see her go somewhere and come back and not get in the shower and scrub for 20 minutes where you had to watch and pay attention. Oops, Savannah's in the shower. You knew you she would come home and it was good. It wasn't the total panic freak out that yeah. we had dealt with with everything else with And her, I see so. you got your swag on. I love this shirt. I love my shirt because for me when I started um, I wore large and so when I started did but when well my 53 pounds now and that I've lost wow. Troy very nicely gave me a small so That's amazing. That my shirt no longer